Tell us about working with Stone Temple Pilots. They needed a guitar tech and they were already in rehearsals. It was the first show was a week away. I got the phone call. Then they said, we need you on a plane tonight. I showed up, I went in the production office. Everybody was there, it was all shh. Because you know, they didn't want the other roadies to get their feelings hurt that they're about to get fired. First thing Dean DeLeo said to me is, I didn't want you here. Is that because he had his friend doing it and didn't want you there? Yep, that was it totally. And I understand that, you know, they were making a step up and they didn't realize themselves. I said, dude, I don't know your songs, I don't know your tunings, we're gonna wing this. He's like, all right. Ran through a whole show, got the thumbs up. And then Dean tells me, hey, I, I, I need something. They have this song called The Big Empty where he plays slide guitar. And he, he needs a, a, a bottleneck slide and then he would flick it off of his hand, but then there were two other parts he needed. So he needed three accessible wherever he was. So I took a nylon guitar strap. I sewed him up a bandolier like the Freedom Fighters wear, handed him his guitar and he goes, dude, you're a seamstress. There you go. And what's funny is 10 years later, I was watching SDP live in, at some lounge in Chicago. Still has it. What's the Dean guitar story? Well, on the road, it's tradition to mess with the band on the last show of the tour. Dean had this one guitar, it was like his first acoustic guitar, and you couldn't change anything out on it. He wanted it as it was. My idea was at one point in the show, they had this big round platform lower down from the ceiling, and it was like a hookah lounge, it was cool looking. We would go out there, we would take their electric guitars, give them an acoustic, and they would play, you know, a couple of songs. I had sent someone out to buy me something that looked like Dean's. I go walking out there, he sees me coming, he sees me trip and fall and flatten his guitar. <laughs> and I was told that you could hear it out at the soundboard. Boom! <laughs> really? <laughs> and, I, and I looked up and he had this look of horror. Like, and then I pick it up and then the laughing started. But also, they knew the crew were about to start their revenge. We would play every day at Soundcheck in case the band didn't come. Rick and Robin from Cheap Trick would hang out and they loved it. You know, they love all that road dog stuff. So the band started hearing people talking about the crew band. After about a week, I guess we got good enough. That's when they said, you guys are going on. I'm standing there behind the curtains that are about to open. There's 17,000 people out there. I said to myself, what did I do in life to end up at this point? For the first 10 seconds, I was terrified. And once we caught the groove, it was all fun. 95, I started with KISS. We did Australia and we did Japan. And then we did the summer KISS convention tour and I put together all the displays. That was my gig. And I was Gene's bass tech and Eric's drum tech. When we were rehearsing for Australia and Japan, I was talking to Gene, he's like, what have you been doing? And I said, well, I just finished guitar tech and uh, SDP. And he's like, you mean drum teching? I said, no, I, um, I'm a guitar tech also. And I saw the look in his eye, I saw it click. And when it came time for the convention tour, he's like, Hey, Kenny, I want you to do me and Eric. All right. And then in 99, I guess you were starting to call it quits, right? Alice was doing a New Year's show at his restaurant, Cooperstown. So that it would be 1999 going into 2000. They needed a drum tech for Eric. So they said, hey, we'd really like to have you back. About a month later, I called and said, yeah, I'm in. It was awesome. It was the Brutal Planet tour and it was it was a good tour I was proud to do. and Was that your last one? That was the last tour, yeah. You know, I'm proud of the career I had. I mean, Are you doing another sequel to your 2009 book? You know, I always envisioned a Kiss book, an Alice Cooper book, a Club book. You know, We Are The Road Crew, Club Edition. Right. And I think that would be a cool thing, but right now the Yule Lads books are, are taking all my creative energy. I've got one that's with the illustrator now. We're taking the Yule Lads to Oz, never been done before. There'll be another Road Crew book in what form or fashion, I don't know. I helped uh, another Alice Cooper alumni, Jeff Mann. He did one called All In. He did a good job. So maybe I'll just help a couple of the other guys for a little while.